Should be up. All right, we are live. It's not showing up in Facebook yet, but we're going to go ahead and get started. And then I will hook up Patreon as soon as it shows up in. YouTube. Alrighty. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nadine O, and I'm here with Don uh, Steven. Steven yeah. ooh, 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 and it's another Sunday, a holiday weekend Sunday pop up art session. Well, let's paint and draw along. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this is all about. Keep creating. You got to keep creating, everybody. And we're here to support that by giving you suggestions Dang. on how to apply that creative energy that is flowing through you oh, in, be yeah. in between your normal activities. We are here. Yeah, I like we, that one. You have to keep that one right there. In man. between your daily activities, we find ways to create. Oh man, they, they, you got yes. me smiling from here to yeah. here this morning, man. Yeah, yeah. Man. you got to keep that whole last three seconds of segment right there, man. You got to remember that one. Up. We got to write yeah. that line down and put it on a t-shirt, man. For absolutely. Real, man. Absolutely. That's our true aim. That's our true mission over here. With Don and Nadine O or Nadine O and Don Stevens. Yes, Let's it is. Draw along, everybody. That's beautiful. Yeah, happy 4th of July, everyone. Too. Happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of July. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So what are we doing today? Well, you see... I, we can go a lot of different angles because it's Independence Day. So I was thinking on that level, but then I thought about it, Nadine. I said, hey, wait a minute now. Everybody's been talking to you about, oh, Don, flowers, flowers, since the park, flowers, flowers. I've gotten some emails. People say, hey, Don, what are some easy ways to do natural forms and shapes? I said, well, maybe asked me yesterday. I said, well, if you come out tomorrow, I'll do something on daylilies. So hopefully these ladies will show up or they'll come and see us and, and watch the record. Or I challenge them too. They can go over to the Patreon, Don and Nadine O, you know, with right. the signature behind Patreon.com. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, if you do that, I'll do several segments on flowers. But mm -hmm. this one is on day lilies today because mm -hmm. day lilies are festive flowers that are even looked at for Independence Day if you do some research on it and things like that. Mm -hmm. You can put them out and stuff. Stuff like this to celebrate Easter, to celebrate certain occasions coming up, the turn of the the, uh, the solstice when you harvest and things like that, and all that, or when you plant things in. So I said, why not? Let's do some day lilies, large type. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like how we like to do over here. Let's put some marker around it and let's splash it with some watercolor today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The watercolor. So that's what I was thinking about. Hey, look who's on TV with us. All I right. know. Every time I get ready to do some art, he wants to get up in my lap. I told and, you he knows the timing now. He knows yeah. the timing. He needs the attention, too. He wants to draw. Sooner or later, you're going to have to put a pad out and let him walk all over it and do his I thing. know. It's going to be pad. Uh, it's going to be puppy paw art. You might start a new trend, Nadine. Puppy Paul. If, if we get him to do it, if he does it, then everybody else gonna want to know how to get their dog rap. to do it. It's, it's gonna, gonna be a wrap. Yep. You can put I'm that gonna... on Patreon next, right here. Write that down. Puppy Paul puppy drawings. Puppy Paul. Well, paintings. Yeah, P -P -P. yeah, okay. Yeah, paintings. I'm with you. PPP. Puppy <laughs> Paul paintings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. I'm with yeah. you. Yep. So, yes, uh, 
So I'm have we had ready with anybody else? Nobody else no, joined us this yet? No, not no yet. Miss, Miss should... Effie, no Rachel Sloan. Shout out no. to you, no Mr. Torito, Broken Rocket uh, Art there. No, uh, who are some others that have joined us? Bao oh, my Patel, right? Yeah, Juan. Uh, Juan, Go, Juan Gomez, yeah. Good morning to all of you. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. John, Z, John Z. Yeah. Good morning to good you. Good morning. Good These morning. To all the people that joined us or left messages with us numerous times. And they're part of the Draw Along family, man. So thanks, you guys. And we're shouting you out. It's 4th of July. Absolutely. So don't absolutely. drink too much Sylvester today and tomorrow. Try yeah. not to barbecue and eat too much burnt up chicken. You know? Hey, yeah. Everybody have some fun. You know what I mean? Because that's what it's all about. And, yeah. and you know, it's great Ooh, bringing... Not, not to cut you off, baby. You know what else you guys can do out there? What's that? What's they, that? they can project us or broadcast us on a screen in the house during their festive moment with their families. Oh, and play wow. some of our videos. Oh, yeah. I yeah. challenge them to do that. Yes, indeed. As a I background. Know. Yeah, hey, if we, and if you hey, want to draw you know, something. You know, and I was thinking because, uh, you know, that sometimes you go certain places like you could go to a local bar and you look up and I can't believe I forgot his name. It's the guy with the, the white dude with the frizzy hair that paints. Oh, Bob Ross. Bob Ross. Why did I forget his name? Um, oh, again, I need to work on the little brain cells there. Yeah. Some people it's like slow television. But he has just, a whole channel that you can play now. I believe it's on Pluto because I watch yeah. it every now and then. Yeah. And it's just like that because his voice comes down. His voice comes down. Hey, this body. How are we all? I doing? don't know. I don't That's know. It sounds like found. something you could do, John. Well, I'm already your there. Voice. People just tell me to just, you know, try to uh, maintain the voice. Mm -hmm. But I sometimes what happens is I get a little bit too excited. You <laughs> know what I mean? Because the, the, the But that's flow, that's how you're different. Right. So then okay, so understand. you get excited and then yeah. you start talking about food. Yeah. And I mean, you know, folks will be right up in there. He's talking about food again, y'all. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. I can't escape it, man. So yeah, I may do that, Nadine, or we may be, we can work together on that and do that as a team. I don't know, but I'm willing to because yeah. I, I know the whole part is I just can't stay in this mode right here the whole time. I start laughing at myself when I yeah. stay in that mode. <laughs> Because I'm all about, you know, all right, once I got you going, I can't maintain this energy. I want to just, all right, let's do some more. Let's let's do this. And let's try this. Try that. Right. right. So, so me, I go up and down in my but that's, scale. But but that that's okay. Because okay. that's how you are different. Do you understand what I'm saying? I feel I, you. I you feel know? You. At this point, I definitely have to feel you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's yeah, no, all for real, for real. All jokes aside, all facetiousness to the side. Yeah, understandable. And that's what people enjoy, basically. So I try to key in on it more. Uh huh. But as we go, like you said, you know, you might see me with a little jacket on, like Mr. Rogers or something, but more up to date, something like the young kids can connect to. You know? Uh huh. <laughs> right, right, right. Some type of sweater or, you know, indigenous looking mm -hmm. jacket or something. That mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Get with it and let the braid down for a minute and wrap around my neck. So, good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Yeah. Or just sit there and stare at the screen and make them like try to figure out what I am first before I open my mouth, you know? Because it happens on SEPTA a lot. I'll stand there and look at people. They'll uh -huh. look at the hat. They'll see the hair in the hat. And they go, What's up, man? I say, Well, how are you this morning, sir? <laughs> <laughs> so, just to switch it up to have fun. Yeah. Yeah. But are you ready to do that date, that date, Lily? Or are you ready yeah. to tell the people about some more stuff that they need to know about? Or can we just jump forward on our I think we should, today? yeah, we should jump right into it. Anybody wants to hear more about what's going on, check it out, check it out at the end of uh our live stream. We'll post it there and we'll have it at the bottom. Or all the goodies, section. all the information and everything. We're going to save that for later. Um, so you can check that out. Again, it's easy for you to find. Um, our Patreon members, I wanted to make sure they were taken care of. So I apologize for looking off to the side. Well, but, we have some Patreon members now? No, not yet. But oh, we're I'm working sorry. On I blew up the before. battleship. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. You got to give me some type of hand gesture or something. Yeah. To say, hey, hey. <laughs> 
Come on, so, Don. Be better. Than yeah. That. But I will explain since I brought it up. We're getting it set up for our Patreon members, those that want to have more uh, um, everyday access to our videos, because we're only keeping our videos up for about a month. You know, so do you see the most recent? And and uh, and then also, if you want to go back and go through them all and have more of a direct connection with us outside to be able to ask questions and tips and things like that, um, we have our Patreon membership site. Just, just to add on to that, that's where we'll be doing, like, if, if we get more interest on that side, that's where we'll do more concentrated classes and, and, mm -hmm. and, and more concentrated studies. Like some people have asked about how to do a hand face, things like this, dog or animal paintings and drawings. We'll go deeper on that on Patreon. The mission of this page, what we're doing this morning is for all of us to just draw together and have fun. Okay? Yes. Yeah. And so that's why, you know, we, we come here, Don gives suggestions. We're working together. We're having coffee. This is just a community of gathering people who love art, um, all different levels coming yeah. together and Doesn't supporting matter. us and supporting each, each other in the process. That is the difference between what is here and what is on Patreon. You get this, you get the community aspect, but then we get more focused and centralized um, instructions. Yeah. So as that membership comes up, there's gonna be more detailed stuff to, um, yeah, that's just going to force Don to have to do more on that side. So force me to do more, everybody. Work yeah. me like a mule. Work you Crack like a mule. Crack on. the whip. Yes. And, you know, and then Patreon, you know, for those all over the world can come and check that out and yeah. be able to uh, go through those courses. Um, I had a I following say? in India. So if they find us on there, hey, everybody mm -hmm. from India that was on October Gallery site when they were seeing my artwork, mm -hmm. come on over. You know, mm -hmm. even I'm going to send this over to the October gallery, some other galleries that I dealt with. Right. To see if we can get people to come from that. So we're going okay. to push forward, everybody. It's 2022. Yes. We have the midpoint. Let's go. Let's rock. Let's go. Let's rock. Let's rock. That's it. That's all, all right, ready? Don. I got to pin you up now. Okay. There we go. I'm getting the lights in position, everybody. Uh, spotlight for everyone. There we go. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's what we want. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Okay, Where's let's you? get this camera right in the right position so that we can do the fantastic things that we like to. I'm using the face side, so yeah, they mean already let me know that everything is reading pretty good when I use the camera this way. Yeah. So, you know, I just have issues in other places when I use the camera this way. Hey! Let's zoom in a little bit, if I can. Probably can't right now. All right, we'll leave it that. I'll just move the camera. There we go. How's that, Nadine? A little bit better? Look, looking good. Okay, cool. And now push this down. I think I'm floored. All right, everybody. Good morning again. Sorry about that. You know the deal. We are work in progress. Know that this box that I'm drawing, you do not have to draw it, everyone. This is the box that represents your page. This is our secret square or rectangle, as we say, that we put all our thoughts in, all our happenings in. Yeah. Why not? This is your world. All right, then we find center as always. You can find center, you know, by crossing the corners. So a lot of times what I'm doing when you see me doing that, I'm using it as a compositional aid mm -hmm. to find geographic center. So I can just put marks on the sides of the page, you see? I can put marks to say where that center point would be. Then after a while, what starts to happen to you is you'll be able to do it as soon as you look at any space that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to find a gestural or geographical center of any surface that you're going to work on. And that's what you should work on to be able to make this so that it just becomes impulsive to you. That's my hopes for everybody that's drawing along with us. 
to, to get that heightened that most of this stuff becomes second nature to you. It just happens. Mm-hmm. And then that's when you get the real oohs and ahs and everything. So I don't know what we're going to call this session. I leave that up to Nadine a lot of times. I just come up with the material. <laughs> yeah. But we're going to do a day lily, everybody. Okay, a day lily. You know what those look like, right? I can call it up if you like. Yeah, that'd be cool, Nadine. Thanks a lot. All right, give me one second. Everybody can know what we're going with. So know that we're not going with a a particular uh, photograph. We're just saying we understand what the flower looks like. But to trigger everybody, we have to, how would you say, uh, show them an image. Yeah, give you a suggestion so you can see. And then we pull it away. Okay. So I have them up now. It's a plethora of daylilies. Yeah, just pick any one that you want to pick for you, Nadine. Just just pick a daylily, you know, Mm -hmm. any which one exploded flower scene. So we can just see the uh, the look of that flower. So we can trigger everybody to see that 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 beautiful shape that it comes out to be the daylily. Yeah, I like this image right here. Let's see, I don't know if I can make it larger. I like it because of how it's placing the other buds along that aren't quite open, doing what you often do when you're uh, giving us a composition idea. So um, yeah, so uh, that's my idea. Okay. I didn't get a chance to see that. Oh, sorry. Okay, hold on. Let me let me do that again. There you go. All right. So this one. Can you see it? No, my side it says it's just letting me know that you started sharing your screen. Oh but it's not sharing your screen. All right. You might not be able to see it because I am. Okay. What was the other scene? I understand what the flower looks like. Oh, you know what? It is black. Oh, apologies. Oh, let me stop that. I may not be able to do that while you're spotlighted. Let me see. Oh, I understand. Apologies, everybody. We we're trying yeah, sorry to. Sorry about that, everyone. We're, we're a work in progress. Come on. Yes. Now. Why don't we go ahead with okay. that? Um, well, I'll just start with just the basic shape idea and things like that, like how I normally do. Unless... And we'll worry about that later. But then yeah. let's just look at it. We're doing an exploded view, everybody. So that bugle shape that I talk about all the time is really something that you want to start off with. It's almost mm-hmm. like starting off with like a cup, you know? Basically, mm-hmm. like so, if you can see that shape there, you see, mm-hmm. because they peel off into like maybe like six petals and things like that, with them bending down and coming forward toward you. So mm-hmm. what we want to do is an exploded view. Mm-hmm. So we want to do it big. So I would say, you know, do like one or two of them, or three of them. You know, mm-hmm. make that basic shape like so, like that. We'll make another one here, going off to the right side, like so, right? Mm -hmm. And then we'll do one down here at the bottom that'll possibly look like it's coming at us. You see how I did that? Mm -hmm. So then this way we know that's the center of the flower. All the petals will come around that point, you see? So you can make them bigger or smaller or make more of them. That's up to you. You see, if I make it bigger, that means those leaves are really going to flip and turn once we start working. Then now just to do the basic shapes of the stem, I would come from the middle like so. Put a line in there like so. You see how I did that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then now you just work on how it would connect to that area. Now you would make this thicker, you see? You come down. This one you can't see, so I would do a line here, like so, and a line here, and then come straight down, thicken that up. See how we did that? Mm -hmm. 
now we can do the leaves that bring in all the nutrition. You know what I mean? The big green leafy ones, you see? Boom. We're going to do some things to some of them. Make them look like they're going off the page because we wanted to make it look like it's an exploded view, remember? Mm -hmm. We can put one or two up here that may have grown with the flower or the fruit of this planet, you might say. You see? And you notice how I'm taking them off the page to make you feel that effect of exploded view. Mm -hmm. That's the whole effect that we want everybody to feel on your page. So bring it back again. That thickness is very important. You want to show how thick that item is, how much girth it has, you know, how much buoyancy, intensity that it has, you see. Now, when we go into the flowers, I'm going to do those in red so we can understand how they flip mm -hmm. before I go to the overhead. Gotcha. Now, I turned my camera. Mm hmm to look at the, the big monitor. And so now we have a split screen with right. you drawing. And then on the right side, there are different images of day lilies for everyone. I had to get creative, y'all. But there you are, some ideas, all right, some suggestions. I, I, all right, but I don't want them to think that I'm following any one of those pictures that you right. may be flipping off. Right, That's I'm not well, flipping off. I understand that, everybody. Gotcha. Understand, we're not following a specific flower, not unless you are. We're mm -hmm. going to talk about how the petals are turning. Right. I have nothing against anybody finding pictures and following those along with us. But mm -hmm. just understand the construction of the flower and how the perspective works. Yes. Because this is the foreshortening idea that you use on the human body, you use in the natural realm too as well. Yeah. All right, you ready? Let's yep. go. Watch, we're gonna do one here that's gonna flip back at you. So we can do this idea here and then flip it down. Now what happens is, is that now when we come back to join it, we join it short right there. And you see how if I erase this area out now, it'll feel like that's a petal coming from the inside of the flower. Mm -hmm. Now we do the same thing on top. You can follow this line out and up. Let it cover the plant like so, but then this time, let's bring it back to the line right there. And then what we can do is bring it over from the top here and then down and in. Does that feel like it's going into the flower? Mm, yeah. Now we can erase that out there. You see how we're doing it petal by petal? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can erase this out here. And now look, we have that, that petal starting to, that, that flower bud starting to open up to us. Now you can do the other side. Same way from here, let it roll this way and down. And now you can bring it back up. But on this one, you bring this from the inside and in here. So now when you erase all of that way, now you have a petal looking like it's doing what? Turning towards the inside again but feeling like it's coming more towards you. Now, how can we make that feel even more like that? By showing the follicles that come out from the inside, which all the, the uh, how would you say, insects love, bees, honeybees, all that good stuff. That's where the nectar is. You see how I'm doing that? Mm -hmm. And look at that feeling that we have. Just that simple to get a feeling of a natural item. Now, you can add more petals if you want. You can add another petal here. We can make that one seem like it's on the outside. You see what I mean? Because mm -hmm. these are coming together here, and then this one is breaking down. So another way of showing that is showing some of the veins that may come from the inside on the petal itself to show how it forms. You see how it's bending and turning, and use that as an aid. You see that? As soon as I put that red line in there, look at how it changed. And now it really feels like a natural flower that has the look or the signature of what? A day lily. You know? Look, we can put one here that goes back, right? But then we don't see the underneath of that. We 
You see, we don't see that one curl. If that doesn't suffice for you, then now we can make that one curl. You know how to make it curl now. Curl it down and back. As long as that edge is there like that, it's gonna feel like it's doing that. You see? Let's do the other one here. This one, let's start with this pedal here so we can come from here, spread it out. From here, spread it out, you see? But now what happens? We have to bring this one back and up to cover that area and then do this. So now when I erase that one out, it looks like it's peeling back. Now we will put that same line that we did for the other one right there. You see what we just did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now this one is one that can come out from the side here. So we can have this one come from here, right? And it's gonna come from the inside in here and let that one bend back that way, you see? So now wherever you're saying it's gonna bend back, that's the curl, this is the top of it. Now you do what you want with this side, make it curl back, oh, curl back on itself. Now you have that feeling. What do I do now? I just erase out the inside of that plane or that pedal. You see what just happened? Mm -hmm. Now, before we move on to the next pedal so we don't get too confused, put that line right in the middle. It describes the movement of the pedal. Sometimes uh, with some of these plants, I've noticed they'll have little, what I would call freckles, but little darker spots of whatever color you make the plant. You see, so it can be pink, it can be orange, you know what I mean? Um, it can be yellow, you see? Uh, I haven't really seen these in violet and other colors, not unless they hybrids at that point. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. How about this one down here? So this one gonna come from behind there. Maybe cover this one here. You see, and then I do the same movement from the inside here. So then that one can look like it's behind there. So then now I can take another one over here and then flip this one back, bring it from the back side, and then flip it this way, you see? So then now we have that back side of the pedal there. So then now if I erase out everything where that pedal is, is overlapping, you see, we made a happy, real happy, go lucky looking leaf there or pedal. Now I bring that, that line back and make it curve. So it looks like it's curving away from us. You see, it's curving away from us. That's what I want you to believe. I want you to believe that it's curving away from us. So I have to put things in there get your eye to believe it, to get your brain to say, yeah, I believe it. See, I erase that out. And then now I have to put that pedal there, you see? But then the most important part is what? The follicles that come out from the inside, from the center. The attractors for all the pollen, shows the sexuality of the plant, mainly female, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And now you have the follicles out of this one. So then now it looks like that one is going in, but it's turning down and up towards us. This one and this one can be almost the same if you flip the page. You see? Mm -hmm. So then how did we do that one? We started from what? From one side, we came this way and we said, okay, I'm going to flip this one down this way, right? So then we're showing pretty much the underneath of this one. <coughs> so then now when it flips back, we have to show more of this going towards the inside here. See, so what happened was we made a backside underneath this time, you see? So it's pretty much this area right here is smaller up here. This one we made a little bit bigger. Now you erase out everything in there that that flower that you just drew in is covering, that mm -hmm. petal. We erase all of that out. Then once you erase it out, now we can come in here and make us see the center of that petal. You see now it turns underneath and now we can make it do like that. 
system. And all of this is nothing more than you trying to get us to believe the curve of the plant. It almost looks like a tongue or something coming out. It almost looks like a doggy's tongue in there, you mm -hmm. know, from the side. They are trying to cool themselves off. See how that looks like that coming from the center? Yeah. You see, and then now you can do the same thing with the top. It's just understand the movement of the pedal. So if I'm coming from the inside, I want to do this thing like this, you see, and curve it. So if that's the case, now I want to show the back side of that pedal turning in. If I'm saying that's the back side, then this edge here is the front side. So then now I can bring it down and let it loop like so. See that? So then now the tongue is spitting itself upwards at something. You see, mm -hmm. it looks like a tongue coming out of the mouth going up. You see? Now that's the top side. This is the back side now. You see how we did that? Mm -hmm. Now I erase all of that out now. I erase out the areas where the flower is overlapping and taking my template that I had underneath away. See, if you, if you do it like this, it becomes easier to manage. Mm -hmm. and so it really, it does. It becomes easier to manage your, your, your pedal structure. Now you can start another one from the inside here and make it taper off into smallness like that. But then now what you can do is you can formulate the front side of that pedal going inside too as well. You see that? And just put a slight little doesn't have to turn under. We want that type of excitement. Now we know that's going inside. We erase out the rest of our template, or if you're using charcoal, you can smudge that away at this point. You see, and now it looks like we're looking to the inside of that flower coming in from the right. Does it, Nadine, or no? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Does yours feel like that? Mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> Too much. Too much. Hey, I'm just being honest. Oh man. Okay. Look, now we just put the middle and the inside. The uh the follicles once again coming out. Make them pretty thick, you know, and they're long, you know. Mm -hmm. I use the power of three. Sometimes you look at some of these plants, it may be more than that. You know what I mean? It could be five, it could be six of them. You can put as many as you want on the inside that you're imagining. But the basic idea is just to get you a, a very template like so. So some of you should already be started. You see what I'm saying? Then now I have to go over to the overhead and then take our demonstration to the next level, everybody. So I'll get ready to share my little screen. Any thoughts, Nadine? Any 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 ideas or epiphanies on doing this part or this aspect of our drawing? Well, I'm just trying to hang in there. I'm trying oh, to keep right. up. All right, let's see what you got. Oh my goodness! Oh, I had to ask that, my friend. Uh, You're probably looking pretty good. You don't think so? A lot of times, everybody that does these things, they don't know that they have more skill than what they think. So that's why I profess to try to show people that aspect too as well. Yeah, Nadine, what's wrong with that? Okay, I just would make the extending stems long from the branch, from the middle branch. Let the yeah. flower dominate that area so we don't have to worry about making a connection to the, the uh, obviously the vegetation of the plant. Okay. You see, if you use the petals for an opportunity to cover areas of complex, of complex movement that's what you want to do take the opportunity to really make the petals whimsical not unless you're following an absolute flower that's in front of you or an absolute picture of a flower at this point okay if you're not doing that then okay don't you know you're making it up as we go so don't persecute yourself have the opportunity to really move those flowers petals around to cover things you know 
make it so that um how would you say um the pedals can be as whimsical as you want to make them as long as they, they still hold the structure of what we call a day lily everybody okay so Nadine, i'm going to go for the screen share I'll share my screen i'm going to go for that there and there we go we are there we are here thank you very much Nadine. Oh boy, our little buddy got Nadine on mute because he's doing his barking thing too much. I told Nadine he just wants her attention. He knows the timing now. <laughs> it's crazy. I am like, what is going on? He knows the timing now. These animals are just like kids. They know the timing. They're like, uh-uh, no, 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 no. So look, everybody, we're going to use watercolors. You can use the Crayola sets. I'm using a Druid set. Nadine is using another inexpensive type of set. Okay? So don't stress yourself about watercolors. As long as you have some, it's important. Could you use your watercolor pencils right now? Yeah. Another product that I wanted to talk about before we absolutely get started. Hold on a second, Nadine. I should have rung that over before I got started. But I didn't, so what we're going to do is I'm going to run over for a second. It's only a real quick second. I'll be right back, everybody. Don't get confused. Stay with me. Holler at me. Oh, no. First, let me show this one first. What you got, Don? What My you going to show us? This one is called a sketch and wash pencil. You see? Oh, okay. everybody. Sketch and wash. And it's made by generals. What happens is, is that with these pencils, they're just like water-soluble pencils. And what happens is you can do this type of idea here, and then we can take a wetness either with your finger. And then what can happen is you spread that, you see? And it goes from being a dry item to almost looking like a watercolor or ink wash. Mm -hmm. Okay? So there's a lot of different things you can do with this type of pencil. It comes with different types of sets. Uh, one of the sets that I'm going to show everybody comes with four different pencils and um, it comes with a brush. So hold on, let me get that package for everybody. Hold on. All right, everybody, while Don's going to get the materials, I want to take this time to say thank you for joining us in the rebroadcast. If you're watching this in the rebroadcast, I am off camera because Don is pulling in some materials for us to check out yeah, and, yes, and some suggestions of what we can use. What's that, Don? Well, that's this Faber, uh, Faber Castile. That's the name of the company. And it's called Graphite Aquarial, which is nothing more than a water-soluble pencil. Once again, I guess that's in French. I'm murdering that whole thing. But the name of the company is Faber, Faber or Faber, F-A-B-E-R, Castile, C-A-S-T-E-L-L. -L. Since 1761, this company's been around making pencils and things for artists and business types like ourselves. And you see in this set, you have, you have a bunch of pencils. They have them in different grades. They have them in HB all the way down to 8B, and then you have a little brush in there. So I'm just going to use this because it works well. This brush would work well with my watercolor set too as well so we already have another brush and then if anybody has water soluble pencils they'll let us know and then i'll demonstrate those if not i'm just going to go with the watercolor and our marker for right now and uh, and just a regular pencil because if i use this in the beginning when i start putting water down now this is going to spread with the watercolor we don't want that so now what i do is i come up here here and I get me one of my pencils that I like using, but I'm gonna use a regular number two pencil again. Oh boy, it's not sharpened. What is going on here, my friend? Oh, sorry about that, Nadine. Well, what happened? John's having a moment. It's not sharpened the pencil. Oh no. Well, we use the other one that we like using, the ebony uh, sketch pencil, jet black. See that, everybody? It's mm -hmm. good for what we're about to do. So let me put that stuff to the side. Put this pencil over here. You know the normal eraser. 
eraser that we use every body, plastic eraser or needed eraser or a pick of a pink pearl eraser. You see that? Yeah, so we move those to the side. Uh, we won't be smudging and rubbing so we don't have to worry about the paper towel right now because we're just using this just like a coloring book would be. Lines that we can follow to filling in. All right, everybody, let's go for it. All right, so remember, we made the basic shape. So you see what I'm doing? Even this one has changed a little bit. See how I got the basic shape there? Yeah, you can see that, okay. Yep. Then now what did I do? I went over here and I put another one on this side. We can make it bigger if we want, you know, so we can have more space to make that puppy flip up. Maybe I'll change that one up too a little bit. And then now I made a circle, you see? And then now we'll put that one right in here. So it's spitting out at us. So you see the shapes, everybody? Those basic shapes really helps with a lot of things, you guys. Helps with a lot of things. It makes it easier for you to replicate these shapes and can control the direction of where things are going. You see, we can make it like, let's do this one here. We're going to flip this one back here, like how we was talking. You see? Let it come from the hole. So we show some of the hole like this. So then we can make this one flip off this way. And then show us some of the inside of the flower here. So you see how I did that, everybody? We flip this one gradually towards the hole. This one we can do here, same way. Coming from the hole, come this way. And spill it off this way. Now we have this one coming from there like how we did before and flip to this way and then in towards that circle. And let us know that it's going in. So change up the pattern just a little bit. See now this one we can bring right from inside here, right from inside the hole. Bang. Flip it away from us and just make that one do like so. I like putting the flip on the petals because it just adds, you know, another interest for the eye to look at. So then you can put the lines from the petals to show the inside or the middle of the petal where the nutrients gets to the whole petal. On the back side, you can do the same thing over here. You see? So I know I put the stems first last time, right? On the board. Right. This time I started with just doing the petals. I like doing things this way to show you that there is no wrong or right way to start your piece. Okay, everybody? Okay. That's the whole thing to give you confidence on that. And then also is to break up the idea of you having to be perfect, everyone, because the urge to want to be perfect is a human endeavor, everybody. Everybody wants to be right. So no, because I've gotten into some recent debates about it and I had to explain to people, I know this is human. What I'm trying to get you to do, though, is relinqu relinquish the urge or control the urge so it doesn't stop you from progression. Mm -hmm. So that's why we say perfection is a lie. It, it really truly is because you have to do things repetitive. So this is what's going to challenge you to do things repetitive or to make you more confident in the pedal structures that you decided to make on your end. If he was in the same room, I can walk over and then we can do some things. Mm -hmm. Since everybody's virtual, the most I can do is just make different variations so you can see different ways on how things go together. Mm -hmm. Maybe frustrating to some, maybe, uh, how would you say, uplifting to others. But mm -hmm. in the long run, it's your challenge. So let's keep on going with our challenge, you know. Let's, let's go for another pedal. Hmm, let's see here. Let's go this way. So let's bring this one from this side here, right? Let this be the back edge of the flower, right? And then now we'll flip this this way. To do the same thing we just did over here, but on the outside here. And now bring that into the middle here. So pretty much that circle would be right about here, you're saying, we're saying. Okay, everybody? So then now we know this petal is turning inward. See how we did that? Right in. This is the back of the flower now. We can show some of that movement on the back. 
that's going right into the area where it's connecting to the uh, vegetation, you see? We can bring another petal this way, right off the center there, and then bring it down, you see? Still bring it from the center here and let it flip back this way into that other petal. Causing some confusion, yeah, but so what? That's what we want. Now you drew the line there. So now we have two petals intermingling in the same area. Big deal. We can come back here, extend this petal down and in, and now bring the follicles out, you see? Make them longer if you want. You know, make them longer, make them cross one another if you want. You see, have some fun with them. So then now it looks like that's going in that way. You can come over here, do the same thing, let them come out. Notice how I switched up the whole process on how we put them in. Notice I didn't put in any vegetation just yet. Now we can put another petal that's here. Watch how we put this one in. It's just nothing more than this one doing this. Because it's bending totally away from us. So then now we can just do this with that line there. That one is folded totally away from us. See the idea? Yeah. 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 All right. Now look, this is where I can come in and curve that foliage or that, that stem, you see, and make it do this inside here. Remember, we just put the line of direction first, how we want it to flow through. Then we worry about the thickness and everything. You see, we want it to be an exploded view, so we gotta do the stem like we really zoom it in, you see. Don't worry, we're going to come back with that marker and the marker is going to save us again. You see, but for now, we got to put in certain things. So then look at this. We have an opportunity to take a petal and make it cover this area so we don't have to worry about drawing in a lot of this area. What you want to do, Nadine? I'll leave that up to you. No? Cover it or don't cover it? Or did you cover it in your piece or no? I can't recall if you did or not. I can't, uh, the covering that, that back, right? Yeah, this area right in here. Oh. Because remember, I started off with this one before in a demonstration on the board. So if you was following along that way, you started off with this one first, then came to this one and this one, then we put the stem in, remember? Mm -hmm. So then now I'm pretty much switching up the, the movement. Mm. So I'll put it in as a suggestion then. What we're going to do is we're going to put a circle here that's going to represent the center of this particular flower, right? So then now what happens is we're going to bend this one back this way. Let this petal come from here because it's coming from the inside now, you see? Here and then let it cover this area right here. Mm -hmm. And then let it curl right there. Just a little bit. Bang. So now we can see where this one is coming from the center here. So now to, to, to clean it up so we can see it, because I know it looks confusing because it's looking confusing to me here, but that's why we go pedal by pedal. Not unless you're, you're really following your piece and you've done these for I don't know how many years, and now you just have a basic real understanding of how these flowers move to you or how these petals would move for you, you see? So you see what I did when I cleared that up? I just erased out the inside of the petal that I made. <coughs> mm -hmm. And I, this is how I was able to make it cover an area. Bless you too as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So then now we know we got this one turning up and away from us. We can do the same thing here and then turn this one this way. So then this would be the back edge here, you see? And then now we got it. See, that's the back edge of the plant here. This is the underneath, the underneath. Now this is the top of the flower here, or the petal. We can bring this from the inside now to do the outside edge of that flower. Bring it in now, and then now curl that one up. You see, so then now the middle would come from here, 
and then now be here and then go into the inside here. See that? Mm. So then now we can do another pedal coming from here now, here and here. And then now I would make that seem like it's, it's curling back this way, or taking up that space. See, and then now it's curling back this way. So now that's the underneath of the flower there. This area here that I just shaded in, that's the inside area. The underneath of that petal that's turning. Once we do this here, it's turning this way and going in. So notice some of the shapes or some of the movements of the line when it curves, that curve can mean that it's coming out towards you and then going away from you to go someplace. And that's the directions of plants that helps you to understand directional forces too. You see? So now we know this is the center. Now I can make the, the little follicles come out now. You see, I'm just using three because I'm making it up as I go. Could there be more? Yes, you can put more and it could be smaller. They may not be as big. I'm making mine's big for fantasy sake. I'm okay with my petal structure the way it is before I start filling it in with my marker. You see everybody? Mm -hmm. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus in on the foliage, the greenery. So now I know it's connected here. I'm gonna bring the thicker side out this way. I may use this back edge, you know, make it a little hump there. Now that goes behind the plant, you see? From behind the plant, it comes out and now it's connecting here make a little hump. The little humps is gonna make it feel more natural to the eye. Those are the nodules as they call it. How it connects to the stalk. You see, we can be very, you know, how would you say classical trained with it if you want to, but I like the thingamajig talk and stuff like that. It makes it fun when you're doing mm. conversation. You know what I mean? I don't want you to think that I'm trying to be a scientist when I'm not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a lover of life. And I try to show people from my angle on just observing the edges. So you, you already know, if I move this over, all we did was line. And yeah, you can see that line mm -hmm. and shape. I got a five-step idea that we use. Form, which is space, light, and then surface everybody. These are the, the five things that you're looking at in your world to determine how you make things move. Lines are edges. So we're saying that these lines are edges of, edges of a flower that we see. And it's taking on the idea of being daylilies. The shapes are like daylilies. The forms, the space that it takes up, the perceived uh, space that it's taking up that you've made is in the form of what? A day living. Now we're moving toward the light and the surface of the idea, but we have to finish up our stall. So we bring it, it's in between here now. It's not being covered by the plants over here, right here. And then it goes behind this petal here. Then it comes out down here, you see? Now this is where you can have some fun and put another nodule there to make it look like somebody plucked or cut a flower off or something. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. These are some of the things you can do by just putting a nodule there. A nodule meaning like a little hump on the side. You see, now remember the stalks now, the, the greenery, the stuff that feeds the plant. So we can come from outside there, come here, hit the petal system, hit on the top of the petal system out of the page. Make it wider down here and thinner at the top. These are the way these plants or those long green, lime green leaves look. They're not as thick as they are at the top. I mean, at the bottom as they are at the top. They thin out. You see, let's have some more fun. Let's make one arc this way. So we can have one arc right out. This is where you can have fun designing your page the way you want to. You see? How I use that idea right there. Mm -hmm. And then now I put the middle line 
for the how would you say the vein that carries all the nutrients for the uh that takes in the nutrients to send to the plant to the root to have the petals which is the uh the flowers which is the fruit come bush forward on the stalk so the whole other aim is too is to get everybody to start looking at their natural world around them you know yeah we, you know wherever you're at urban environment suburban environment rural environment you're going to see flowers and you should take note on what type of flowers are in your area, no matter where you are. You know, if you're with us in the Delaware Valley, uh, there's a certain ecosystem signature, I believe it's a seven or eight. You know, if you're down going towards uh, the Carolinas and stuff, that's the zones five, six, and so on and so forth. And then now you're at the Tropic of Cancer. You see what I mean? Where all the good light is so you can grow things. So Miss. So Miss Ampy, Miss Paulette, you in the perfect environment to grow these type of flowers. Have fun. Mm -hmm. So now look, we can do some off of the side here, like how we said, some of the uh, the greenery, the foliage idea. Mm -hmm. Some of them will come off the back of the stalk here, you see. You can do a bigger one again that may come through the background. Make it thinner in here, you know, so it chops up space but then bring it through where you're saying the plant is going to be. So then we have to put one here because here's the edge of the flower here. Yeah, and then that's the edge of the flower turning back away from us. You see here. Yep, yeah. and then that one's blending into that one. This one is blending in here. You see, so then now we just start really understanding what we got going. This one's coming down here, coming right here, bang. That petal that's coming down this way, you show where the leaf is going, bang. It's right behind there, you see? Uh, maybe I'll put one coming out this way that we may not see where it goes in, you see? Maybe that'll seem weird to everybody. But where is that one going? I don't know, we just put it there to, to chop up space. You see what I did? Mm -hmm. So now you can come back with your marker, remember? The, the 0.08 marker or micro marker that you have, these are called micron markers, archival. Uh, Sharpie has one that's like this. This one is of the Pigma Micron family, the uh, producer of it. Name of the company is, is Pigma, it's called Micron. 0.08. So let's go in here and start. How would you say outlining? Because everybody wanted to know, well, what are you doing? All right, it's outlining everybody. And now it's like what you call inking. So now you would do certain movements and follow and embellish a little bit here and there. Expand upon ideas and things, you know? Now this one is coming from the inside here. And I suggest taking your time, doing one at a time, so then this way you understand what direction each one of your flowers are going in. So then this way you don't confuse yourself but so much, you see? So that's the outside edge. You should be following your drawing now. You see, if you wanna make note or take note to uh, things being under and over, then you would just do things like this a line structure that's underneath that shows that this may be underneath because it's quasi shaded because of the inking that you chose to do or it's the back side you see so then we do the same thing over here we can come from this edge here come all the way in start showing them when it comes around even curl it even more you see bring the hump in if you want following the idea now See? So now I can even play with this some more. And it's going to be underneath on this side. See how that made everything look like it's turning back in a way? See, your mm -hmm. outline, your outlining now is what you're doing is chiseling into your drawing now. You're chiseling into it to make us believe that it's really there. But you should take your time and do one at a time 
because you don't want to confuse yourself with what's the back and what's the top and so on and so forth. See how I'm putting some of the veins to show the back side of the pedal. And I'm not putting them in like they're permanent lines. I'm putting them in like sketchy lines, you see? What that does is make you feel like the veins is there on the back side. No matter what the color is, they would be a little bit darker. So if you made them orange, then it would be more like a deeper red orange. You see? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do this pedal on the inside or one of the same, watch this. I can do the follicles first that's coming from the inside. This is where I can say I want to make them longer, make them a little bit thinner, you see? And put a nodule on the top of them because sometimes they have little nodules on the top of them. So I'm going to put that now. I'm going to take the free creative license and do that now and do one at a time so I can show what direction they're going in. See how I just put a little circle on top? Mm -hmm. That's all I did. And it makes it feel like it's more natural than what it is. I'm not trying to be direct to any particular daylily right now. I'm just making them up as I go. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like to understand how do you just make things come to life? This is one of the ways. So for all those people that sent me emails asking me these questions, how do you bring things to life or make them look more natural? You play with the shape that you know of in the natural realm. If it's whimsical, make it a little bit more whimsical. So then it really feels like it, you see? Now I can take the plant from this side, the petal from this side, and then curl it like so. So then now what happens? This is the underside here. And this is the top side now that runs right into the follicles there, you see? And then now it slides back. And now I can do a little whimsical thing on the side there. You see, now, if I wanted to, we can make it seem like it's really that's coming out this way. But sometimes I like to leave that open, especially when I know I'm going to scan it or something. Mm -hmm. That'll give people another chance to be creatively, you know, you know, with the colors and things and make their own little shapes in there that can make us believe that we're going in. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times if I do these as uh, coloring books, a lot of times I won't put a color sample in it. The reason being is because I want the individual to make up their own color sequence with it. Un, how would you say, not dictated by what it is that I'm going to give them to follow. Sometimes you just want to leave, the, leave a, uh, uh, an outline like this open for anybody to fill in any which way they want to. Mm -hmm. you know, so they can feel as if they're really making this object their own. That's the whole idea. So then let's do this flower here. Now we can do the flower here. I would start here, come here. Now I will make the inside of the flower do this, follow it out now, and then come around. You see, now I have the opportunity, this is the underneath, to bring the underneath here and make it stop there. Reason being because now that flower has to come from the inside, but that's all my other structures in there. So what I'm gonna do is follow my petal from right here to make it feel like it's spilling out this way and then coming back. So then that line comes from inside here of the middle of that flower, okay? And then now we can make that side touch here. And now we can show that this flower is flipping back this way. So then now we can do this in here for the back side of this or the underneath of this side. The closer you put the lines together, the darker it seems. The further you put the lines apart when you put them in there, the lighter that area would seem. You see what happened there? Doesn't that feel like a nice little curl of that flower there? Mm-hmm. And I can just bring it so right here just to, to cut it even shorter. Now, I know you're saying, well, dang, Don, you, you didn't stay with your idea there. I know. But this is where we can play up that area. So then now what happens is <clears throat> I can make a spot for this to come even wider in there to cover this area up. So that's what we'll do. I'll come in here, 
can just formulate this in here where this stuff is now. You see, this is where the other leaves are. You see, the middle of the leaf here. And this is where the other leaf is coming from the back here. So I'll put this one in here, right here. You see, yep, then the center of that one will be right in the middle behind the stalk. So that means that I can put the stalk in now, the basic of the stalk. So notice what I'm doing. I'm putting all the basic strokes in now of the exterior. And then I, after I erase it, I'll come back and then do descriptive lines, as I call it. Okay. So what time we got? It's 11.17. Good timing we got. So let's get back up in here and get to work, everybody. In here, let's bring this plant in. Yeah, let's bring this petal back this way. Don't let it curl, but so much on that one. And then bring it back to the inside here. This one would come this way and then come in here. All right. Now this is the backside folding on us and turning, you see? Connecting to the branch here or to the stalk here and then bending towards us again. So it's revealing more of this outside to us now. You see that one, the back side. And then what I would do is a couple of lines to show the difference between the back side and the inside of the plant. So notice most of the lines that I'm putting are on the underside or back side idea. To force your eye to want to go inside more of the plant. You notice that, Nadine? Yes. Yeah. Let's go. Are you on the inking part yet? Or are you not on the inking? No, part? no, no. Okay. Thinking. All right. We'll just keep going. All right here, and we can connect that line there. You see, now I can make some of the nodules or the follicles that we talked about, and then make them that round, funny shape that we decided to make, and then make them thinner. You see, I decided to do that, to make them thinner. And put a little funny nodule on top, a little few. Mm -hmm. There you have it, you see? I can do some that's coming out. Now, I use that bugle idea a lot because it makes you feel like it's more like a funnel or a bugle to make things look like it's coming from inside out. Mm -hmm. You see? Yep. And then now I'll do the petals going in. This petal back here is there. So then now I show this one. You see? There we go. We can fit it in around there. You see? It gives us uh, another opportunity to show some descriptive marker lines too as well. All right. Now one of our last flowers here. We do the same thing again. So for everybody that's there, just start, you know, doing your last flower. Show the flip with the line and everything that we talked about. Show the line going into where you get to where the you're seeing the little follicles or nodules are for the pollen and everything. The sexual organs of the plant, of the flower. The sweet nectar that the, the insects are going for to help pollinate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nature, the final frontier of the body. This is where you can play up that whole idea of things, how would you say, curving and folding on itself, you see. In nature, you have a lot of these curvilinear points where things curves and falls on itself. and does all these nice movements that everybody enjoys about drawing flowers. If you look at art history, we like to pull out the sensual, sexual aspects of the natural movements of flowers and bud flowers and things like this and sprouts, how it's connected to the female uh, creative idea. That was a nice way to put it, right, Nadine? Yeah, it sure was. You sure did clean that up. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. You can tell mm -hmm. I was a single child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what you say? Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Change it up quick. Figure out that dictionary and that thesaurus real quick, buddy. <laughs> Let me stop.
Mm-hmm. Hopefully everybody else is having fun with us on that level. Come on now. It's 4th of July weekend. Your kids are bound to ask you these, what we would call idiotic questions, but what to them seems like honest, real forward questions. And I was one right. of those kids. So yeah, enjoy it, everybody. Have fun. You know, and like I said, if you have an opportunity, project us up on your screen. Mm -hmm. Let us draw flowers with your family. You see, let them get the idea and the notion how to be natural. Yeah, and if your kids are driving you crazy, give them paper. Bring them to us. Yes. (laughs) Put us on TV and bring them to us. Guaranteed you'll love it. They'll learn something and you'll be like, wow, you see? Notice how I'm taking a creative license, Nadine. I'm changing up the nodules Mm -hmm. on the inside. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I'm doing that again is is because I wanted to look more naturalistic. I've Mm -hmm. noticed that at the ends of those little follicles that come out of the plant, they have different little movements. So I'm just putting my own little spin on it to Mm -hmm. make it feel natural. Just Mm -hmm. to foster you guys that's watching and come along to see, like, even if you do your template drawing, it's not like a watercolor for real where you can't change the lines. You can change the lines in yours when you start putting the marker line in. It's after you do the marker line that you may not be able to change anything else. You may have to mm-hmm. come in and just add at that point. So okay. then let's do the stalk at this point. See, I got the stalk coming from here. Remember, this is the one that comes from nowhere. Mm-hmm. This is where you do some of those bumpy lines because you know in nature, everything is not, how would you say, you know, Anger. Everything is based upon curvilinear movement. So you can use some of these little bumpy little lines and things that will represent that type of movement. You know, mm-hmm. the idea of this being natural coming out of a tight, tightly wound space. And then mm-hmm. when it gets moist enough, then it comes and it, it, how would you say, it displays its beauty to us. Mm-hmm. I teamed up another one, Nadine. Watch out, man. Yeah. I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. You know, because because you have to be kind of, you know, kind of like, you know, in understanding, but you can see everybody sees the sensual side of plants. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it becomes kind of sticky sometimes explaining or expressing that because people, you know, they have their own thought process about what that is. So it can be it can be comical or some people can take it serious and things like that and get perturbed and turned off we don't want to turn you off we just want to show you the reality of what's around you and why when you go to uh the flower show in the convention center in philadelphia that just passed what's the other thing it's not just to put the flowers on display but to show that sensual side of mother nature Mm -hmm. putting these forms together and it does something to your heart and your spirit just to see these natural shapes together i challenge anybody you know what I mean? Even if you have an edible garden, it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yep, here comes the food idea, Nadine. Yeah. Sorry. You see, but you can do these simple little projects and things that would explain a lot of things to you easily without you having to refute or say you got to go to Google all the time. You know? Mm-hmm. It'll be right there in your house. You don't have to do these real big, huge, humongous things. You can do small little baskets and things like this. Beet grass, you know, different types of letters that you can make, you know what I mean, bro? Not the iceberg, but the rugula and things like this. Mm-hmm. Dandelion you can grow for yourself. You know, romaine. You know, yeah. All of these different things, just edible plants, and you can do your rosemary and your thyme. These are all herbs that grow pretty good with very little care. And you see, now it's all inked in. Now what I can do is I can come back with my kneaded eraser now or my plastic eraser. We did line, we did shape, we showed you the form of the flower. We dealt a little bit with the light, but showing some of the lines that come around. We dealt a little bit with the surface. We're talking about how we put the, the middle lines in to show the, where the veins are of the plant that brings all the nutrients in for us to be able to look at these beautiful plants that we love. Now I come in and I erase out all the lines, you see? 
this is the point where you have a choice. You can either like what you got here, scan it into the computer, and then, you know, print out another one and then do that one in color if you want. Or you can erase this out, take a picture of it, and then go ahead on and start doing watercolor in this one here. You know, either which way you want to do it. You can color this in how the plant really looks, or then you can go into another different style or something, you know, blurt and let things move and do as they go. But notice how it looks like everything is made up. Yeah, these are made up shapes that make you believe that it's a day living. Mm -hmm. You know, or a plant species that's in the day lily variety. Mm -hmm. That's my mission. That's what I want you to believe. That should be all of our missions this morning to make everybody believe our day lilies are really on our page. Make them up. We didn't follow. I don't, if you saw the uh, shared part that Nadine shared for us, so we can look at a flower or look at a, a day lily just to get a specific little idea of how to start that shape off. Don't take it as if we were looking at a flower to do this idea. That's what I want everybody to understand. I didn't look at any flower particularly to say, this is our drawing. I said, what does a daylily look at? I looked at a daylily picture, boom, I stepped away from there. And now I take the shape from my investigation and apply it to the page to make you believe the way that I perceive the daylily. So I'm hoping that you can show us your variety of daylily, you know? How are we seeing your specific data? See, that's what's important to this whole draw along, everybody. So for those young ladies that conversated with me at the art camp and, you know, some of them that have conversated with me offline uh, as an email or an instant message to uh, talk about creativity, I hope you joined us. I hope that uh, I look forward to seeing you guys online with us live to do more of this type of stuff to show you, not to prove to you, but to show you what you can do. One, when you draw along with a group or in a, a couple of individuals like Nadine and myself, and um, how you can advance yourself just by having this open forum just to move forward, to get your juices to going, to not be judged, to have an opportunity to be whimsical. You see, erase away all the lines that's underneath now. Now you have something where you have these clear lines now with the marker. That's permanent now, they're permanent. So you can come back with your watercolor set like this. You can get the work in there, man, you see? So I'm gonna erase this out and then I'm just gonna have fun with filling in and just show you different ways on how you can have fun filling in real quick. Because we can use the idea of just calling it splatter and then you just let the lines show from underneath. So this is like a, a, an abstract expressionist way of filling in too as well. Let's see. Some of the graffiti artists use this idea. Mondrian used this idea. Solid line and colors that disperse. So do we have to have the colors inside of the confines? Mm. Or do I want to explore another idea? You see what I mean? Mm. So it's up to you. You can make us believe an actual plan is there, or you can just, how would you say, have some fun, splash it. Dominating? No. Nope. Yep. Nope. 11.30. So that's what it looks like, everybody, when you erase it out. You should have that feeling of those, those natural petals feeling like they're turning away or turning towards you. She got the, the major components of a plant to make us believe that it's a plant on the page. Mm -hmm. Let's see? And now... If I have some water here, you know, filled with water. Shoo. I'm about to say, oh no, baby, I got a cleanup job to do. Uh -oh. <laughs> we 
But no, that wasn't my water vessel. So that's good to know. That's good to know. But what I can do is get that and go get some water. So I'll be right back again, Nadine. And man, this is Nadine O trying to catch up with where Don is. <laughs> oh, I messed up a line. Oh, uh, there's no such thing as perfection. And here I am. I hope you are having a wonderful time following us along on this paint and draw along session. Drawing some whimsical flowers, some day lilies, trying to make that happen, y'all. I fell a little behind. I'm trying to catch up, but it's okay. You go at your own pace. The beauty of having the video and to be able to play it back, slow it down, pause it, is amazing. So I think I have drawn all of my lines. I'm now going to erase what I have here and get my water ready. Woohoo! My water vessel's ready for some painting. There it is. There it is. You have yours together, Nadine? Yeah, I have I do have water. Okay. Um problem is, oh gotta be real careful here. Yeah, buddy. Uh because no, I'm no. paint. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go for it. What was you about to say? Oh, oh no, I'm painting on the same place I have my laptop. Ah, what you want to do is put that vessel on the floor then. <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah. If I don't have, like, with me, see, I'm not in a home or personal environment. I'm in a true workspace. Right. So then, you know what I'm saying? If it spills here, the computer and the wires are out of the way. Right. The only thing that can get messed up is the painting. So if you're not set up like how I am in a workspace, everybody, separate from your home, what Nadine is going through is certain things you have to go through when you have a home studio that's not yeah. separate from certain living aspects. Right. And uh, yeah. And my, my, my office space is still under construction. That, that's <laughs> what I mean. That's why I yeah. said that right now. Yeah. Which is causes a lot of yeah because so i long. yeah richard sees me i'm down right. you know where i'm not out of sight out of mind kind of thing right he's like just, oh well she's upstairs in the shower or something or she's hanging out yeah you know no he sees you like yo what's up why are you just sitting there you're not talking to me what's going right? on you know what i mean right? he's in that mode but then look everybody see how i got a styrofoam plate here you can use these styrofoam plates or styrofoam um Containers that you have for like chicken and stuff like this or a steak and whatever you're eating at this point, they do have it for some um, uh, almost meat products. You know what I mean? They put them in these styrofoam casings. So you can use them from there too as well. I wouldn't use the paper ones. I would use the paper ones for the acrylic. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is I can get my color together. Like say, for instance, if I'm going to use orange here. And I can put it here on my on my styrofoam plate. You see everybody? Mm -hmm. You know, and then now I add more water to the mix. And now I can just put in a basic orange in there. You see? Basic orange. Let's mm -hmm. drop it in. You see, I'm having fun. I'm just going to drop it in, add some more water to my brush, and then spread it around. Mm -hmm. Do a wet in the wet type of technique, I Mm. lightly on the back and then just let it go you see do it again for the other flower here you see how i'm just taking liberty just splashing it in you're not really trying to be all you know Ooh, i'm trying to be all Andrew wife no man just drop it in you know drop it in drop it in you know you don't want the, the follicles to be orange then work around them because the water is going to go wherever your brush goes or wherever you wet. You see? So I can work around those follicles, you see, and work with a diluted orange. You see what's starting to happen? Mm -hmm. That's just to get the colors to go and get things started, to see where things are going to be. You see, I'll put some orange in here. 
Notice how it's not bothering the marker, you see? Mm -hmm. Work around the follicle a little bit. You see, I have pretty much like a loose gestural style, everybody. Meaning that the stroke doesn't have like a necessary direction, except for the direction to be able to show you an expression. It's gestural, it's moving. Um, Let's go. If we go back in time, you'll hear about a guy named Franz Hall. Mm -hmm. You know, Franz Hall was a Dutch painter, I believe. And he painted some of the stuff for the uh, churches and things like that. Another good study for everybody to look at. But what his main importance is, is that he used a broken, divided touch, as they call it, a stroke by stroke. So you can see all the strokes to see where he was on the uh, canvas. They also call that a gestural movement, where it's, just, it's quick and it's moving. You know, you want us to see all the strokes to know that a human being was on the surface. So, so now you see the dilemma in the European history of it, you know, is either you wanted to be so masterful that you didn't see the stroke, or you was uh, trying to purposely show us that the human being is on the surface. It's not from another source. So if you talk about that time, you see now I put that lime green in. You know, you're just putting the basics in everybody. I like to put stuff in diluted first when I'm dealing with watercolor. So then this way I know where colors are going and then now I can work up the richness now. You see, I don't want that rich color. I don't want that color to be rich and powerful from the gate. Only if I'm dealing with an opaque medium. If I'm dealing with an opaque medium, everybody, and the suggestion is out there for you, opaque meaning like acrylic paint, oil paint, oil pastel, soft pastel. These are all like opaque type of mediums. And then that's when you can work from dark to light. When it's a translucent medium like inks, dyes, watercolors, you see, you want to work from the idea of being light or diluted to richness or to purity. So that means that your color gets stronger as you're working. You're not trying to bring us to the strongest color from the beginning because you're just trying to show us where colors are going or show to yourself where colors are going. You see? I'm trying not to get my head in the shot, everybody, because I'm standing up. That's how high I got the camera up for this one. But if I lean in, you might see the top of my hat and be like, hey, what's that? You know what I mean? <laughs> see now a lot of times what i like to do with backgrounds when i'm working with watercolors like this is i'll make them gray or i'll make it like it's outside so i'll make it some type of blue you know what i mean mm -hmm. get things started you see just to get things started put that green in between there this is where you can start having fun with that background now. I did another color, another plate, that's the plate for the hot color. Now this is the plate for the warm or the cool colors. So I'm gonna put some of this blue in here. So I'm taking it off this palette here and I'm putting it on the plate. Water it down, water it down. This way, if I wanted to, I can get a bigger brush if I needed to, you see? to really make that background whimsical. But we're gonna do it with this thinner, smaller brush. So I'm gonna pre-wet some areas already. Pre-wet it, right? And then come back with that blue. Boom, 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 see? And just move it around in that area. Let the water just do what it's gonna do with it. You see? Just to start it off. So now look, what I did was a pre-wetting area. We wet the area. Now I'm working flat now. I'm not working elevated. Mm. We're working flat down on the table, everybody. So the purposes of this here is to have puddles on the page. I want the puddles to make the, the uh, paint do whimsical movements. Mm. You see? Just let the paint do what it's going to do. I'm just going to control how much paint is there. What's the value of it or the brilliancy of the paint? You see, now I'm just dropping it in and let the water take care of where it's going. 
See what's happening on the surface, Nadine? Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people probably have used that idea and said, oh my God, what's going on? I don't want it to do that. Now you know why it does that, because you have puddles of water on the page and you should use it as an opportunity to move colors around. You see that that colors do what it's gonna do on the surface. And then you may find something in that, you see? Notice how I'm not worrying about being perfect and all this other crap that a lot of people worry about. I'm pulling in the area with some water to where I want that water to be, where I want that idea to be and look so you can see it even more. I'm not gonna mix it on the plate this time. I'm gonna take it right from the cake and then go right into that area so you can really see how that color would move, you see? Mm -hmm. See what's happening, everybody? And now you'll get these whimsical looking marks that everybody will be trying to figure out, well, how did they do that? Only the people that paint would know that, hey, they're using the, the water to let that paint move around and let it do what it do in the beginning, you see? Just let it go in there, just do it, just let it go. Mix a little bit if you want to. Now you have two ways, you can go straight from the cake or you can mix it a little bit. Go into that water, let it disperse. You see what's happening? Just touch the surface with it and let it disperse. Let it go, let it do what it's gonna do. It overlaps a little bit, so what? Just control it. Try to move it rather than control it, do not say. Try to guide it with watercolor. So you know, where are my spaces at? Yeah, look, right in there, I use the tip of the brush now. to go in between where I'm seeing the background is, you see? That's all it is, everybody. Taking your time and doing that. Going in. And I'm just letting that, that color absorb into the paper. Just let it do what it's going to do. Don't control it. I mean, don't, you know, try to force it to do something that it doesn't want to do. Just let it guide it through. Let it do what it's going to do. You just pretend or predetermine where it's going to go by wetting the surface with this idea of being wet in the wet. I to add a little bit more water to it, to the cake here. Now I just use just the water straight from the cake. I mean, the, the mixture straight from the cake. You see how it just happens? Watch. As soon as I touch it, look how it starts to disperse in the area where I'm saying it's wet. Right. See, once you understand that you're not, you're not controlling it, you're just guiding it, you see? because it's water, you just guide it where it needs to go. The more you connect with that idea, the more you'll have these whimsical looking ideas in the background. You see, now you can see where this blue would be in here now. That's not the plant, that's the background there. Now this is where you can get some clarity, you see? This is a background element in here. Now I can just fill that in with the tip of my brush now, you see? You know, it goes on and on and on. Now I do up here in this area and here, I wet it. I can pre-wet that area. You see, use the cake again. Now just dab it in there. Look at that, look at that. You know, get right to the edge of my item the best I can. If it goes over a little bit, it's okay. It's okay, we didn't destroy anything. Perfection is a lie, repetition is the truth, everybody. Guys, remember that idea. Look, we got to do this circle in here. So wet it, wet it, wet it, wet it, wet it, wet it, wet it. We go to the cake. Now this time I'm going to go back to mixing. My cake, mix it on my plate. Now I hit it. Bang, 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 bang. Look where, look how it goes right to the edge of where the water is, and then it stops. So, you know, all I got to do is come back with the tip of the brush and boom, touching those areas and make it go forward. Mm. See? Now let's fill in these last three spaces that we got there. I'll do the same thing again. Wet, double load my brush with wet water. Go to my cake. Mix it in. Bang, 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 bang. You see?
And if you like some of them, then you leave some of those marks there. Then you move it around those areas. You see, and that's what happens, everybody. Look at how it's filling in. Give me that free blue movement. Like, it's like, wow. Where is that at? You know what I mean? There's the last space that we got to fill in there. And this is all your beginning color, everybody. Remember, you, you can put the water down to see where everything is going to go. If you go over borders, then that means that your color is going to go over that border. So watch. I did that by mistake in some areas. And you see how I went over, Nadine? Yeah. Yeah, that's what you want to watch out for. But if it's in this dilution stage, you're okay. Because once you put a more intense watercolor mixture in the, in the green areas, you might not pick that up. Another way you can get rid of that is you can rinse your brush out, get the water out. You know, I don't have my paper towel with me, so I'm drying it off on the watercolor that I have on, on the bottom here. And then you can lift that color out. You see what I did? Yeah. I just lifted the color out, as they call it. Now I just let that color do what it's gonna do in these areas here. I see it's one more little area. So I'm just gonna fill that in like so, just my brush. And there you have it. See, that's the beginnings of filling in with watercolor. And it doesn't matter the watercolors you got everybody. It could be the Crayola watercolors. They would do the same thing, you see? They would do the same thing, everybody. And then now you would just work up to a richer color, everybody. It would get richer and richer, richer and richer as we go. Meaning uh, the, the color would get more intense. So let's see this idea here. That means that if I took this orange here. That means I'm coming in now and I'm trying to bring the purity of the color up. See how that is intense now? Mm -hmm. I can take some of that out because it's all water. You see, and then now I can put some of that in and leave some of the lighter color showing from underneath of that. You see what I'm doing now, Nadine? Yeah. You see, and that's all you got to do. Now you start filling in where some of the intense oranges would be. So we're going towards the inside. We know that has to be a little bit more intense in there. So we can start that off by lightly putting a little bit of orange in there at a time. You see that? Yeah. You see how the orange is starting to make itself more relevant in the piece? Mm -hmm. And that's all you're doing. You can test your stroke out first to see how much orange is there before you start putting it in, like in this middle one here. Now I can do this idea right here. And put more of the, the pure orange towards the bottom and it will appear like it's darker. See what's starting to happen? It makes you feel like you're going inside the flower. So now when I do that over here with the orange, I can do the same thing. Load it up with some stuff there with the ink. And then now I can go a little bit more pure of a mixture with the orange on the inside here. You see it as you get towards it, even on the underneath there. Just a stroke, okay, here. That would be a little bit more of a richer color. You see? Mm -hmm. Notice what starts to happen. We're working from the inside here, so I would put some of that darker orange on that middle vein Everything from that vein below can be a little bit richer in color. So it pulls your eyes inward. That top one now, I would put it more darker in here, more richer in here. And then now I would fade this one out. So now it looks like we're going into the inside of that one gradually, you see? Mm -hmm. And you can just add it gradually, 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 and that purity is gonna come up more and more and more and more. We can put the yellow if we wanted to, straight from the cake. Yeah, 
on the outside here to make it feel like it's more outside, you see? Mm -hmm. I like wet the cake a whole bunch so we can put a whole bunch of water in there. Why would they call now? Why would we? Oh, Jesus. You know what I mean, Nadine? Mm. Yeah. Hello? Hello? What's going on? Hey, don't 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 say nothing. I'm online. I'm teaching the, the last minutes of my art class. All righty. All right, Nadine, I'm back. Sorry about that. Yeah. Everybody, I'm gonna tell you they're on the grill. I don't know if I want to leave the studio to be disappointed this year. <laughs> no. So we'll see what happens. Because uh, this week is a tumultuous week. We'll start two new programs this week for people. Nice. And uh, we're going to go forward. You still doing the kids stuff? Yeah, yeah. That happens on Tuesday at uh, Winston-Noming uh, Park in Parks oh. and Recreations. I'll be doing two-hour drawing classes from Monday to Wednesdays for the next six weeks there. Okay. Yeah. So we'll be doing some of this type of stuff to make it easy for them to replicate what their idea is. Gotcha. And simplify it to this point. And you see what happens when you start doing that, everybody. You see? Mm -hmm. The whole idea. The whole idea. Okay, because what I can do too is there's a way that I can zoom in even more and so you just see just the flower drawing. So mm -hmm. we'll do that next time. So, but you see everything that I've done in there so far, right? Yes. Yeah, all you have to do now is you would come back and you would do the same thing again with the blue, you see? Or you can come with a different octave of blue, you see? But then all you would do is you can come back in, wet the area again, and then come back through with more color right over top again. Flip it right in, have more fun with it, add more color. Add more blue. Let the water run while you're doing the blue. Mm -hmm. See what I'm doing? I'm, I'm guiding the puddle around while I'm putting the blue in. Letting that blue do, do what it's going to do. You see? Mm -hmm. Letting it gather where it's going to gather. Just moving it around. Moving the water around. And let it go to where it's going to go. Yeah, there we go. Some more deepness in there. Move it around. Let it do what it's going to do. Don't be afraid to let it just glide where it's going to glide to. If you want to move more, add more water to it. Put the blue to it. And there we go. You see? Boom. See that, Nadine? Look. Boom. Yeah. Boom. What you do is just add more pigment to it and then let it go. Boom. See how it starts to get intense? So yeah. you can work this as much as you want or as loose as you want. Uh-huh. You know, but I would say work back there first to get your richness going. Work in the in-between spaces to make things happen. You see? Re-wet areas. Come back in with the blue again and then just let it do. Load it up with pigment like how I'm doing. Let the water be in there. And then just drop it in. Another way of getting the same effect is laying down a, a wet layer, putting the ink in, and then coming back with salt and dropping the salt on it. And then disperse the paint. Yeah, salt, table salt, sea wow. salt, granulated. It'll hit the surface and the salt, the sodium, will push the water out. Wow. From the crystal. So then when you let that dry, you have this crystalline looking effect. 
for wow. things like they're dispersing from little small. It almost looks like snowflakes almost. Oh. Yeah, so it's all these different things you can do with watercolor. You just have to be in the mind state that you're not you're not controlling it, you're guiding it. Uh -huh. See? Now, is there other ways of that you can control the watercolor? Sure. But I'm trying to get you just to have a moment where you can make a result or get a result, you know, easily without stressing, without thinking that you have to know everything about everything to be able to make something react. No, let's take a chance. You see what we're doing, right, everybody? We're just letting the material move and groove where it goes. All right, so then now we're at the end of the rainbow. What you got going on, Nadine? Show us your love. A little something, something, not a lot. All right. Let me unshare my screen. Yeah, yeah. I can't do anything until you yeah. do that. Stop sharing, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey. Let's see. All right. Yeah, it looks pretty good, Nadine, to start off with. Yeah. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Way to go. Yeah. Now you can see where you can put richer color and things like this. You can play with what the surface of the flower may look like to make us believe things are turning inward. Right. Inward, going inward. You know, put the richer color toward a more muted color towards the inside and let all the beautiful color be rich on the outside. It'll yeah. make us feel like that even more. You see? Yeah, I was having, if you notice, I was having an issue when I applied the yellow, uh, the ink from the pen was bleeding. So then I just took oh, it. Which marker you got? Which one do you have? Which brand do you have? Precise uh, Pilot. All right, because that may be a difference in the brand and the ink. Yes. I know with Micron and with, uh, well, with Pigma and with Sharpie, mm -hmm. their, their mark or their inks is water resistant. Okay. So I just, it dries. I just let the gray do the gray thing and do what it was doing and let it be the darkness in the center part. Well, yeah, you have no choice at that point. Yeah. You let it just bleed and let it do. Let and it then, do. Mm -hmm, and I was like, and now when it dries, you would it'll be perfect for your, your color pencil or your watercolor pencil at that point. Right. So I was and like, so, oh, you want to do that? So let me go ahead and let you do that. But now you learned your materials even more. Now you know what to expect from that particular marker marker yeah. that's in your uh your kit, your tool yeah. set. Yeah. So then say for instance, you really want something to bleed like that and you want to use that use type it. of bleed. Yeah, now you can use it. You encountered it. Mm -hmm. I would say take a piece of paper like this and then just do a bunch of marks and see how you can manipulate that marker to make it do different things. Mm -hmm. And that's how you start to master your materials to do the things that we're doing each week. Because mm -hmm. you want to be able to have the freedom just to understand or just play with the material to understand how to place it. What can it do for you? How do they work? You see? How do you isolate? How do you make colors stronger with it? You know? I mean, even still, we can still come back with a marker now that areas are dry a little bit, and I can come and establish, you know, different marks to embellish for surface quality, you see? Mm -hmm. Like underneath here, you can make this seem rounder and make the stalk seem like it's all chewed up or barky, like, but it's still green. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm doing? Just with yeah. these little hesitation marks. Oh, I can't. I can't see. Oh yeah, I'm. We're, I didn't save them. I'm sorry. I didn't. Rather, I don't. I, I didn't share the screen. So, mm -hmm. hold on. All right. Yeah. Like now, if you see in this area right here, what I did was I came back. The ink is in there, or the watercolor is in there, but it's dry. Mm -hmm. But now I can come back with this micron marker, and then make you believe the surface of that stalk now. Mm -hmm. You see? Now that's underneath there, and then now I can do the same movements on top here to make you believe the stalk. Mm -hmm. To make you believe the roughness of the surface of, this, of, of the stalk, you see? 
Mm. And then, yeah, even though I did that, right, I still can come back with the watercolor, come with a darker green, you see? Let me get that together real quick. I can come with this, this green here and a little bit of the emerald green that's next to it to get a nice dark green. And now I can come in here and darken that area in with the green. Mm -hmm. To really make that seem like that's a shadow area, you see? See what's happening? Yeah. Then I can come back and change the vibrance of that green, dilute it a little bit, you see? Mm -hmm. And then I can come back and make it seem like it's lighter on the upper part of the plant, you see? Mm -hmm. So all I did, I came back with the green and worked over top of these dried areas. Mm. You see, come back again. Now I can use that darker green again. And now I can put some darker areas in here and there. That's not black, that's that darker green with more of that blue in it, you see? You're working around the orange area. You don't want the orange area to be harmed because we don't want that to fuse in with that green, you see? Now I can make that green up there, come back with a little bit of that yellow and then drop it right in in there, you see that? Mm -hmm. Drop it right in in there. So then now the upper portion of the plant seems like it's more with sunlight. The more richer I make that yellow, the more it seems like intense that sunlight may be. Mm -hmm. You see, I wet my brush, I can take some of this paint from here, put it on here, put the water with it again. And then now I can put that yellow green or that yellow through the rest of the piece. So now we know that that yellow is in the atmosphere. And it's showing up even in the dark areas, you see? Mm -hmm. And it's just how easy it is to do. So notice how it's lighter at the top you see, mm -hmm. or it feels lighter at the top than it is at the bottom. Now, instead of using that darker green for the leaves, I use the lime green. And I'll move it over, more water in there for that joker. I really should have the water and the palette on the same side so I'm not coming across the, the painting so I won't drop any paint on there by mistake, you see? So now we have that there. That's a better position for that, yep. Yeah. And straight to my plate, you see? Now I can come in in here and then put that more intense yellow green down here on the foliage, you see? Mm -hmm. And then look at how that makes that look. See that green is coming in. See. Now on the inside there, I can add more of the yellow if I wanted to. See what happens to that now. Mm -hmm. So notice how I'm guiding the color in. I'm not worried about saying I can, I'm controlling it. No, I'm guiding it through the piece. And then I let it dry a little bit before you add another layer on that area or I move to another area and I add more of that green to the other side here. Maybe leave out some areas to make it seem like it's lighter in those areas, you see? Let that dry and come back with the yellow over top of that. So then now that yellow will pick up in these areas and get brighter and here and here. And then now these greens will get more yellow green. So it's the same thing up here. Let's see, watch. I can come in the middle here, make that a little bit more intense, and then make it intense from the middle outward towards the edges. See what's starting to happen there? Mm -hmm. Now, when I put that yellow in there, when that dries and I put that yellow in there, that should bring out, you know, a nice look in there. 
And notice how we just add a little bit of the time, a little bit of the time. You know, I'm not trying to rush it and all this. I know we're at our 12 o'clock point. Mm -hmm. So I know, yeah, we'll, we'll have to stop because of that. But for everybody else, you can keep this going. You can go as far as you want or as less as you want. It's up to you, totally. See? So yeah, for the purposes of instruction and to stay with our time frame, I'm gonna stop there now, okay, everyone? And I'm gonna say way to go to everybody. Way to go to everybody. Excellent job, everyone. You see the materials that we got now. Some of you should have these supplies now and be able to move forward. If you're watching us in a doctor's office or something like this, then of course, you're just gonna have your regular pencil or the doctor's office pencil or pen. You may not have the watercolors in your bag. That's okay. Just do it with your pencil, then, you know, and then draw away, preoccupy your mind and try to listen out for your doctor calling your name. <laughs> ah. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, let me take that screen off there. Any questions, Nadine? No, just working through it. And there we go. I'm going to stop share right there. There you go. Yeah. Way to go, maybe. Way to work that. I'm working through it. Time. Yeah, take your time. Add it a little bit at a time. And you see how it works. Yeah. You see, and then you can add more purple to the top. You can make it look like it's a night scene or dusk scene. You see what I'm right. saying? That's totally up to you now. You can add, you know, some yellows in the background, and that yellow would probably represent sunlight. <laughs> you see? So, and you can do that as it dries. You can have a, a blow dryer. So a lot of times what I would do is, like I got it in my towel, but I, doesn't, I don't have it, um, I would just say plugged in. So a lot of times you can use your hair dryer. See ladies, see, see, oh no, see I didn't do it again. I'll hold it over here. Hair dryer, see everybody? Okay. Yeah. So this is a bit old school Videl Sasson one. You can get these from your, you know, the Salvation Army or your secondhand spots. You'll find hair dryers and stuff. And I say get one or two of them so you can use it to speed your process up. You can use the hair dryer in the hot phase or in the, even in the cool phase to dry off watercolors real fast or to dry out, uh, dry up uh, acrylics to a certain lay a certain uh, intensity, so you can work over top of these layers and move more expediently. Okay, everybody. Yeah. So understand that you can use a blow dryer. Maybe I'll make sure that's out for our next session okay. so we can understand what to do at that point to move our, our, our speed up to another level. But that means another outlet for you, Nadine. <laughs> yeah, I got, actually, I have the blow dryer down here. Oh, okay. So then you could have been using that too to dry off areas faster. Yeah. You can use the, the hair dryer too to push paint around on the surface. Right. So uh, maybe I'll show that next time when you double up the ink in the background and you blow it around and it'll move and do different marks that you can use too as well. Right. It's the whole idea of using splatters, uh, 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 disbursement marks, things that you don't have to really manipulate them with by hand to get an effect. Mm -hmm. These are all your arsenals to do watercolor any which way you want to. So right. we, could, we could have went into, like, once I get all the color in there, if I don't like that blue background, well, I can blot it out with black if I wanted to. Wow. To make those oranges even more intense being in a black environment. Mm hmm You see? So on that level, done deal, Nadine. Yeah. 12, 10. Yep. Let's keep creating, everybody. Yeah. 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 All right, all right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There I am right now. I don't know. Still could use some work. Yeah, you're looking good. You're looking good, Nadine. You yeah. just have to control where the watercolor is going, and you'll get that. You'll get that in the in uh, as you're working. Mm -hmm. The more you do, the more you're going to start manipulating your hand to move a certain way because you're going to feel confident about the movement that you're using the watercolor in. Mm -hmm. And it's no way of really telling you when you're there. You will see it. Each artist sees it on their own terms. All right. I'm doing is giving you basic suggestions to work with 
Now it's up to you to see the idea even more based upon how many times you use this suggestion to fill in things. Yeah, it's the seeing the idea and the filling in. Yeah. Like, you know, the focusing on the subject is one, but it's being mindful of what do you do with the background? Yeah. You know, how what, what do you like? How do you approach that? How can you use the background to, to really excitement. make your subject pop? Yeah. Yeah. So. So just remember this last part. Uh, um, uh, tones and shades and, and uh, how would you say uh, tertiary colors push pure colors forward. Tones and shades. And tertiary colors push pure <coughs> colors forward. I knew tertiary colors or ter tertiary mm -hmm. colors push pure colors forward. Pure colors forward mm -hmm. okay got it yeah notice That's our i didn't takeaway. say yep yeah, notice i didn't say uh tint you said tones, tones and shades, shades and tertiary, tertiary colors. colors push pure push colors forward, forward. Got now, it. all you have to do is play with that idea on a piece of paper, sacrifice one piece of paper, everybody, and see when you make tints, I mean, makes tones and shades and, and mixing tertiary colors, what that does when you surround them around pure colors. Mm -hmm. You'll see that either the color is going to get more intense or it's going to seem like it's leaping off out of that space where you put that around it. Mm -hmm. So have fun understanding that phenomenon of color movement or color reaction. Mm -hmm. You know, and all my artist friends that understand that, keep on dazzling and amazing us with the way that you guys deal with color, man. Yes, absolutely. Right. Yeah, John Zeber, uh, Juan Gomez, mm -hmm. uh, um, who else the Tiburinos, you know what I mean? Raphael and Gabe. And their sister, they do a lot of good work. The ladies at the uh, 1040 uh, Art Gallery over there, we're talking about, um, oh man, the ladies over there. <laughs> the ladies over there. Yeah, at 1040 Gallery, a wonderful gallery to go to, everybody. Uh, Miss Morris, uh, Miss Pauline McCall Houston. And yeah, and, and our other homegirl there, you know what I mean? Everybody there and all their work that they're doing now. Uh, hey, let's just have fun and keep creating everybody. Keep Absolutely. Doing and keep playing with color. Keep playing with color. Yeah. I like that. Keep playing with color. I'm writing that down. Right. Yeah, there you go. And keep creating. And keep creating, everybody. Thank you That's so it. much. This was awesome, Don. Yet another hey. one. Hey. Another amazing class today or session today where we got together and we did some art with, with Day Lilies. This was awesome, Don. This was awesome. Yeah. I didn't even know where we were going to go with it. But yeah. to be able to just take a simple concept, you That's know, it. working with petals on the flowers and, sh and showing depth, you know, being able to show the fold, you mm -hmm. know, that's one of the, and, you know, that was a, a little bit challenging thinking of that concept. Yeah, you could stare at a flower and try to 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 copy what you're looking. But mm -hmm. really, we're just taking the idea of what a flower, what a petals on the flower, what it does mm -hmm. and 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 replicate it in our own world. We're creating this wonderful world yeah. every time we come up, every time we show up. That's what you get. That's what you get when you come to Let's Paint and Draw Along. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you get, everybody. That's what we're talking about. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Hope you're having a wonderful and safe holiday week. Got a couple more days. We got tomorrow, 4th of July. If you're watching this in the rebroadcast, we keep creating. All Absolutely. Time. We keep creating in between 
at, in between the daily activities we are creating, when we are doing our daily activities, we are creating. We're always creating. And what we're saying, Don, keep creating, keep creating everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Be All sure to right. leave comments in the comment section to let us know how we're doing. There it is. All right. Peace, everybody. Yes. Oh, bye. All right. <laughs>